In this video, I'm going to check a carpenter square for perpendicularity and straightness of the blade. So I'm going to write the program, I'm going to check the part, and then I'm going to check a similar part with the same program. So I'm going to show you how all that works. This is kind of a frivolous thing, checking a square for perpendicularity, but hopefully you pick up a few you know, useful uh, ways of doing things with the Zeiss CMM machine. So what I'm doing, we're just checking normal carpenter squares. I've got a Minotoyo, and then on the table is a Starrett. The setup, I've got these little magnetic discs that fit on the table. They just screw right in there. And then the square pops right on. Now this looks a little, you know, uh, weak as a setup, but this probe doesn't apply very much force at all. You could kind of, you know, check it with your finger or whatever. As long as the taps don't move it, the probe shouldn't move it either. So I'm, I'm happy enough with this setup. So what this lets us do, as long as the part is more or less similar, we can check, you know, it's the same program, which point of this video. I'll, in the uh, description, I'll put a timestamp for the actual results if you just care about which square is more perpendicular. So let's jump right into the programming. I'm going to start a brand new program. I'll show you on the screen. The first thing we always want to do is the base alignment, then the clearance planes, and then start picking out characteristics and getting the rest of our features. This part is going to be aligned a little differently than some of the parts we've done before. Normally we've got a square block. We choose the plane on top, make that our spatial rotation. In this case, because this part is shaped a little funny, I'm going to choose this surface right here as our spatial rotation, which means we need something perpendicular to it to be our planar rotation. Now I got two choices. I could, I could use this right here, or I could use the top of the blade. I don't want to use the top of the blade because it's got graduations in it, you know, where the, the letters are kind of sunk in there and it could screw up my readings and mess up my probe. So I'm going to use just a couple points on here and I'll show you how to change that in the strategy. And then the rest of the alignment will come off of this blade. So let me go ahead and start taking some points. Now, as always, hit this, if it beeps on you, hit the lock key and it'll let you drive around. So I don't need to do anything on the computer. I can just start making features. The first one, the flatness, I want to get four points on here spread so the probe will scan automatically. I don't want it to hit anything, so watch out where you put your points. So I'm going to drive straight onto the part, straight out. I'm not going to adjust the Z depth. I'm just going to come straight out here, go right back in, go straight out. I'll go down, come back in, straight out, go back over here, go in, out, up to where I started, take one more point, okay? And that'll draw a rectangle and take thousands of scanning points along the way, right? So always remember on the screen to come over here, either hit enter or hit okay to make that feature. So we're all set with plane one. Plane two, I'm gonna use three points on top of this part. So I'm going to hit OK, and then I'm going to double click that plane, strategy, and I'm going to change this polyline to points. So we're not really measuring this feature, we're just using it for alignment, so we don't really need a scanning path. It's good enough for it just to take some points that will lock in what we need to when it checks the other part. It'll be good enough, right? I'm going to hit OK on that. Hit OK. I'll come down here to this blade. Now, this is one of those things where you got to kind of lean over and make sure you're right in the middle of that blade. Once I'm sure I'm in the middle of it, I'll just drive right on, straight out, over here. I'll just take three points. Whenever you're doing a 2D line, make sure you don't move the Z up or down. Drive straight in again, straight back out, okay? And the strategy will be okay for this one because I do want it to scan. I'm going to hit OK. And that's actually all the features we need to measure the perpendicularity of the square. So I'm going to go into my measurements tab, base alignment. I'm going to hit OK to create a new method. Spatial rotation, 
is gonna be that first plane. Hit OK. Planar rotation will be that second plane. X origin is gonna be this plane right here because that's what controls left and right. So that's what we wanna treat as X so we don't get all confused. Y, it's gonna be this 2D line. It's gonna control front and back, okay? And then Z origin, one reason I picked this top plane, top of the part, it's a good spot for a Z origin. So that's gonna be plane two. So we've got our base alignment. Now we'll do our clearance planes. Hit OK. And then this is where you drive around. Just make sure I'm about, whatever, a half inch above the part. And then I could zoom out and see my clearance planes. I'm happy with that. You don't need to do anything for negative Z. I'm gonna hit OK. So at this point, We've got our features, we've got our alignment and clearance planes. If you are nervous about a feature, you can right click it and hit execute. And the machine will check just that feature. You have to have your clearance planes and alignment set up to execute an individual feature. But again, it's a good way to proof your program before you run it for real, okay? So this is just gonna draw that rectangle I was talking about, scanning path, and then it's going to stop. So at that point, I'll go into characteristics and start making the characteristics we wanna report, which is perpendicularity. So I'm gonna to go to form and location. I'll go to perpendicularity, double click, the feature is going to be the 2D line. The datum is going to be this surface. So, so we don't have a drawing to work off, it's not obvious, but you want the datum to be the larger of the two surfaces you're dealing with because the measurements come from the datum. You will get a different answer if you switch these up, okay? So 2D line is our feature. Primary datum is going to be plane one, okay? I'm going to hit OK. And since we're here, why don't we do a flatness on that plane, plane one, okay? I'm not gonna enter a tolerance because I'm not working from a drawing, so this is just gonna output uh, some numbers, right? So it's always gonna be red unless you input the actual tolerance it's supposed to be. And then we'll do a straightness on that 2D line, okay? So that's essentially all we need for a basic program. Now. This is just for fun, but you really want to go in and change all of your strategies to outer tangential elements because when you're checking something with a square, right, you're putting a workpiece against it. That workpiece is contacting the high points of these surfaces. That's what outer tangential element uh, does. It's just calculating where the surface is based on the high points. What the default LSQ or least squares does is figure out the average of the high and the low points on the surface and puts the plane or line through there, which isn't where, so, you know, if you're checking something with this, it's not where it would contact necessarily, okay? This simple program, it's not gonna change it more than a tenth of a thousandth or something, so I'm not gonna worry about it. So I'm ready to run. I can go ahead to my characteristics tab, hit run. I'm going to clear existing results. I'm going to go to measurement plan 25, which is what I just wrote. And I'm going to hit start. I'll keep my hand on the, the speed wheel until it starts going to a feature and then I'll let it roll. So I'm just going to let this roll and probably speed it up in the video. Okay, so it ran the program. I'll put the report on the screen. We've got a perpendicularity of less than one thousandths, a flatness of four tenths of a thousandths, and a straightness of four tenths of a thousandths. So not bad for this square. Probably more accurate than you need for laying out two by fours or whatever, but it, you know, it's gonna depend on how tight the hand wheel on the actual square is, right? It's got a mechanical adjuster. So you gotta tighten that thing down, which I did before I put it on the table, but it depends you know, how tight it is on how square the thing is gonna be. So let's move into the next part. I wanna just show you how to change 
parts and run the program. So I'm just gonna peel this off. I'll put the next one back on. It does not have to be in the same position. All it's gotta be, you know, the probe has to be able to clear these pins, but you know, it could be crooked, whatever. When we do the manual alignment, the machine is gonna find the part based on the alignment we already did. So this is one of the things alignments do for you. They tell the machine basically where the part is. So I'll exit out of this. I'm gonna to go to run. Instead of measurement plan 25, I wanna do a manual alignment. So I'm gonna hit start. It's got a kind of new dialog, the manual alignment. We need to pick points on the feature. So plane one, again, is this ground surface right here. It says it's got 1,905 points. We only need three to establish it. Okay, so we're gonna go in. I'm gonna take three points, and then that's good enough for the computer. So if you notice, you got some zeros up here with three points, you don't get, there's no variation in the surface. You can't have that with three points. Three points is always a perfect plane, right? So this is all you need. I'm gonna hit okay with this and it's gonna bring me to the next feature, plane two. Because this plane only took three points, it's not scanning, you only need three points. <clears throat> but it doesn't have to be the same three points you chose the first time. It's just gotta be three points on that plane, okay? And since it only needed three, that dialogue goes away without having to hit okay or anything. And then last is 2D line one. So you really only need two points for a 2D line, which is what I'm gonna do. The two points. Drive straight out, I'm gonna hit okay. Now the machine will you know, warn us it's gonna go into CNC mode. Drive the stylus above the workpiece. That's basically all you gotta do. So I'm gonna hit okay, get my hand on the hand wheel, and then let the machine do its thing. This part is so similar, it should not have any hiccups as far as checking it goes, right? So I'm gonna let this roll through and speed it up in the video. Okay, so we got a result. Turns out Metatoyo square is not as square, <clears throat> or perpendicular at least, as the Starrett square. So the perpendicularity is <clears throat> almost two thousandths out of perfect. Now, I'm sure this is a, still a fine tool. Uh, it works you know, just as good as a Starrett for just about everything else, but there is a difference. Now, you could say, you know, you need a program in, filters, outliers, use the outer tangentials, which I should, but I've compared these two squares to each other with the exact same program. So even factoring on all the extra stuff you can do, there's still gonna be a difference uh, between them. So I just wanted to show you know, how to write a quick program. The alignment was different from the stuff we've done before. Uh, show you how to do a manual alignment, check the same part or similar part twice if you gotta move it, and uh, just how to, and how to check a few GDNT uh, characteristics, right? So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. I'll try to make more of these CMM videos coming up soon.